Hello everyone and welcome to a little bit of an informative video about this thing, this mythical thing called rigging. It might not be mythical to some of you, but if you are interested in 2D animation, 2D cutout animation, you might have heard this term banded around. Uh, rigging, what is rigging? What exactly do I do? It sounds complicated, it sounds a little bit technical. Um, and it can be very technical, but it's also very creative. It's very rewarding. It's very enjoyable. I like it. Uh, I think a lot of other people like it. And it's actually a real career pathway now. You sit in the middle of the animation production process. And good riggers are like gold dust because they can um, glue all other departments together. So let me talk a little bit about what is rigging. To try and explain it, what I've done is I've taken a stab at like kind of defining it in a few words. So for me, rigging is the process of translating a design into something functional for animation. So the rigger's main job is to take designs by character designers, prop designers, background designers, anything that needs to be animated and make it more time effective, cost effective for the producers to to put into animation, um, to put into the animation production process. So this is the thing where we don't draw everything frame by frame unless it's like a hand-drawn production. So rigging is very much for these cutout productions where you're kind of blending that feel of something being hand-drawn, but getting the most bang for your buck without trying to sign too much that it's about money. Rigging has come to prominence through people wanting to speed up the animation process and save time. You know, it's not always about taking shortcuts. It's just, if you do a walk cycle of a character walking into a scene, you might not want to redo that walk cycle if the character walks in the same way. This is where rigging is really useful. We can, we can template that and we can make slight adjustments to that walk cycle. The character can be carrying a cake, a present, a cat, whatever you want, without having to redo all the animation. Just tweak a few little bits. Okay, so um, the rigging process, like I said, it's sandwiched in the animation production. It starts with the initial design. Now this is just a rough sketch of something to give you an idea. Um, and then it goes through concepts and design, uh, finalization, final line work, color, that all comes before the riggers get involved, although they may advise depending on their, their level within a production and how big the production is. And then we get to this, which is uh, the final color version um, ready as a rig in, in Toon Boom or whatever other package you're using, which has different kind of like selectable parts. Um, we can move these around and, uh, you know, you can move the parts around and in, in a way that makes sense for animation. So how do we get to this? How do we translate all this into a rig? Well, Basically, the first job really of the of the rigging team or the rigging artist is to take the design that's been created and to split it all down into parts that are needed for animation. So you kind of take the brief of what the animator wants, um, what kind of movement and style and things, the movement style of the show, uh, the any sort of like limitations that there are, um, time constraints, and then you break all these pieces down and you gradually split the design pieces uh, down into a way that go together, suited for animation and help speed up the animation process. So they become one, one character like this. And all these parts are clickable and movable and animatable. And um, I can, you know, adjust these very easily when I'm in animation. And it saves me loads of time because of all these little functionalities that the, the rigger has uh, built in. So we add basically an invisible skeleton that connects all the pieces. And these pieces allow us to move, move the other parts in a similar way to our own body. So I've drawn over a fun cartoon skeleton. When I did this, I was like, wow, this character's proportions are a way out for a normal, normal human. But that's part of uh, animation and cartoons is that you have different kind of structures to a normal human structure. Let's not forget though, Riggers don't just build humanoid characters. And this is the thing, we, we take humanoid characters and they might have different proportions and you have to apply your knowledge of anatomy and other things um, to get them working correctly. Uh, the animator will have to test them. Maybe you have to do some adjustments as part of the pre-production process. Then when you get into production, 
of making like TV series or whatever else you're making, you might have to make tweaks to the to the templates to the to the rigs of the character and adjust them so that they fit and and suit for different episodes. Maybe one episode your character's hair is different or they're wearing a different outfit. That's the job of the rigger, working with the design team to bring that in and then get it ready for animation. So riggers don't just build humanoid bipedal characters like um, you know humans like you and I. They build uh, animals and creatures. Uh, you can get some pretty fun ones when people are rigging dragons and so on. Um, props and clothing. Often this is a more entry-level position. It, people start off on props. They're less complicated and it helps them learn a production's preferences in terms of uh, how they like things to be built. Background elements, like if trees are blowing in the wind or a cardboard box that has to kind of just be as part of the background a little bit, but it has to have a little bit of movement to it, that might be something that needs to be rigged. Uh, and literally anything that you can think of that needs to move needs a rigger. Okay, so that's a, a general kind of like overview. Now for a quick demo. Now you might have seen this, this slightly intimidating thing on the side. This is called the node view, okay? So I'm gonna go inside this demo area. Now this is basically, if you're familiar with animation, the timeline is everything that's gonna be animated um, with time along the top and you have different layers and so on. But because of rigs and how they are, they get quite complicated in terms of layers. You can see how this arm itself already has four layers with four, these green bits on the top allow us to animate it. And the blue bits along the bottom, they hold the drawings. So when we switch them out in front of the camera um, over time, and then we can animate them and move them around. It's kind of like drawing something on the paper and then moving the paper around under the camera. That's the kind of the relation of the two together. But because we have so many layers, they can get very complicated. So working in the timeline isn't always the easiest way. Now, Toon Boom Harmony, which is a really popular package for cutout animation, especially in TV series, it's, it's blowing up how popular it's becoming in the past few years. This uh, has this system called the node view. Now, the node view allows you to see all the elements in the scene, like the timeline, without time. So it's like taking all the elements of your projects and laying them out on a big table and then kind of like they do on the crime scene investigation, putting the little bits of wires between how they all link up. That's how we do it in a slightly less macabre way for animation. I've got my different elements here and they've been drawn ready to be rigged. So with a full outline, because when I rotate these, I need this, this outline, you know, I don't always have the option of having it in this set pose. So the same with, with this kind of sleeve, this has got the full outline and I need to rig in the functionality. The first thing I'm going to do is um, put in some uh, structure because basically most of the time when you move this upper arm, you're going to want all the rest of the arm to move with it. That's just called hierarchy, okay? So the way how we do this in, in Toon Boom is we connect things down. So kind of like a waterfall flowing down. Don't worry about this multi-port in. This is just, we're inside a group. So I can show you just the stuff I need to. This is like that sort of the master. So this will move around with it. The same with the sleeve. I want the sleeve to also be moved when the upper arm moves. So now if I click on the upper arm and move it, the rest of it moves around. If I move the lower arm, the hand moves, moves with it, but the rest stays put because that allows me to do things like this. And I can move the hand individually or just rotate it, okay? So that's kind of the functionality that we want there. The next thing is to get rid of these lines, these overlaps. Now, again, don't worry if this is too technical for you. It's just a little bit of a taste of the kind of cool stuff you can do in this software. Toon Boom has this really cool, uh, simple method of um, basically patching things. It's called auto patch. And we can connect things into different little blocks of artwork. These are called nodes. And we can tell the software, you know, when the line overlaps this hand, I don't want it to be visible. So this allows you to create nice shapes, but not have to worry about erasing those lines all the time. So it's a really cool function. So I'm just gonna pop in two of these auto patches here. And now that's all sorted out. So I can rotate the arm and it will automatically patch. You can do fancy things with overlaps there, but I'm not gonna do that now. 
And then the next thing is I want this sleeve to only appear inside the arm. So what happens here is the way how things are connected, whatever's furthest left is closest to the camera. So if I was to pull this to here, now the sleeve's in front, but I want it to only appear inside the arm. So what I'm going to use now is basically a mask. It's kind of like cutting out uh, a hole in some paper and moving it over a picture. It's called a cutter in Toon Boom. And I'm going to hold, uh, I'm going to pop this in this line. And I want this to be cut by the, the fill of this arm. So you can see how my line and color are on different layers. These are called art layers. So it's kind of complicated. There's lots of different layering things in here. But um, it's okay. I'm your guide, and I have plenty of uh, plenty of things to show you and knowledge to know which bit goes into where. So I'm going to connect up this. This is basically filtering out just that that skin color, and it's going to connect it to there. Now it's the wrong way around. So I'm going to invert that mask, and there we go. So now the sleeve will only appear when it's over the fill of the arm. And the final thing, I'm just going to show you something fun. Um, Toon Boom has this functionality called uh, deformers, um, and I'm going to create one with an automated method real quick. And um, don't worry if you don't understand how that works. It's just basically creating. It's allowing us to um, stretch this drawing. If I click on it and go to the drawing view, this is still a rectangle, but the deformers kind of like allow you to animate it. So that means that I can animate and keyframe this and save this into the animation so I can make a nice little sleeve there and adjust it as I need to. So there's our, our arm. There's a little taster of rigging. And you can see that we started off with something very simple and we ended up with something like that. And if I go into the full rig of the full character, which is here, um, you can see this is the, this is the structure. Um, so you can see similarities, but there's all these things going on. And it's just multiplied many, many times over for each different element of the character. And it might seem like, well, how am I meant to understand how all these lines connect to things? But you, you sort of build it uh, as you need to, and you apply that logic, and then you end up with a nice little simple group on the outside. This, times many times over, creates a full character rig which is what we, we ended up with in our, in our demonstration. So thanks for watching. I hope you understand a little bit more about what 2D animation rigging is, and I hope you're interested in it because we need good riggers. Uh, we need good riggers to make great animation productions and tell stories to the world. Thanks for watching. I wonder if you are interested in becoming a rigger or learning about rigging for production, for animation production, how to make characters like I've just shown you. If you are, I have a course that you might be interested in. It's a five week part time course uh, teaching you Toon Boom Harmony, but rigging. So how to make these characters, how to make things in Toon Boom. The course includes one to one feedback with myself, with, uh, with live sessions online. There's a whole video library, there's email support, there's a curriculum to follow along to, lots of exercise files to, to play with and practice with. And you get a license of Toon Boom Harmony Premium, the version that you need to be able to see the node view and do all these fancy rigging things included with the software. Have a look on my website, adamsanimationacademy.com to see when the next course is running or get in touch via the contact page if you've got any questions. I hope to see you on a course soon.